What's up guys, I've got a blend to tell you for today. So I was playing around in the program and I worked out a new method of creating some really funky abstract visuals. I thought it would be good to share with you guys. Uh, the method's really easy because it's mostly just using modifiers, but what I love most about it is that you only have to change a few parameters every now and then to create complete different patterns. And I think the patterns are really cool as well. Um, I think you're gonna learn a lot from this and yeah, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Right, so once you've got Blender open, we're going to leave the cube as it is, and we're just going to delete the light, select our cube, and we're going to come to this modifier section, you'll see the little spanner here, you're going to go to the modifier properties, just click on that, add a modifier, and we're going to add an array modifier, should be just here. And now what that does, it basically duplicates the cube along an axis, so we're going to pump the relative axis up to 4.4. So that's the that is basically the spacing between the cubes, and we're gonna pump the count up to six. So now we've got six cubes all in the arraignment. Great. Now we're gonna hit Shift A, add a curve, and we're gonna add a Bezier circle, and we're gonna scale that up to eight. So hit S and then eight. Now you're gonna see there's this circle thing. Uh, that's not an actual object. We're gonna use this to um, guide the cubes along a path. So the way we do that is click on the cubes, come back to your uh, spanner and go to add modifier and we're going to add a curve modifier. Now it's not going to do anything yet and that's because we haven't linked the uh, object to the actual Bezier circle. So when you added that modifier you'll see this appeared here. On objects you just want to select Bezier circle and now you see we have an arraignment of cubes around it. Now this is where things start to get fun. We're going to add another modifier and we're going to add a screw modifier. And you can do some really cool things with this. It's uh, generally designed just to twist an object in a sort of screw shape, but we're going to use it to create some really interesting animation paths along with the Bezier circle. So with that screw modifier added, pump the screw. We're going to pump the screw up to 32.2 and now you're going to start to see what this modifier does and now we're going to drop the angle down to 44 now we're going to create the actual animation so if you select your bezier circle you can do some really interesting things with it um, you just all you have to do is just rotate it and you get some really interesting movements and it, it gives you the freedom to create some really abstract motion graphics I think it looks awesome but yeah for now we're just going to rotate this Bezier circle, so select your Bezier circle, we're going to rotate it along the z-axis and I'm just going to change the end to 240 I'm at 24 frames per second, I want this to be a 10 second animation so if you apply a keyframe on the rotation parameter of the z-axis of the Bezier circle, we're going to add a keyframe to the first frame now we're going to jump to the end, we're going to move it to 241 and we're going to change the z-axis to 360 and apply another keyframe this ensures that we get a perfect loop. As you can see here, we're getting some really cool movement now. I'm going to change the interpolation settings um, for a better loop. So in your timeline, hit A, so you select all the keyframes, then hit T, and we're going to change that to linear, just so the animation doesn't smooth out. We just want it to be a constant animation when it comes to the end. Now I'm just going to set up my camera. So I'm going to hit, so I'm going to click on the camera, I'm going to hit Alt G, just to reset the location and then Alt R just to reset the rotation and I'm going to hit G and then Z and just bring it up above the object so hit 0 hit G and then Z again and just angle it up until you find a good spot because it's quite a large object and when you start scaling things down it will affect the arraignment settings so uh, I'm, instead of scaling it down I'm just going to change the clip end 
just pump it up to about 200 just so we get the full object because the camera is sort of cuts off at a point of distance there so that's what the clip end does um, it's basically saying after 200 meters from the camera it's going to stop seeing what's um, what's there basically and now hit play cool now I'm just going to go back to my cube and back to the modifier section and I'm going to change the axis on the screw to the Y axis now you can do whatever you want you don't have to do this as I am it's really up to you and I'm just going to bring my camera out a bit so hit G Z and the further you bring your camera out the further you have to make the clip end just to make sure you're not missing any object data I'm going to also bring the focal length out a bit now I'm going to go back to my uh, cube and I'm going to add another modifier I'm just going to move the curve modifier below the screw modifier just to get a different pattern you get this kind of swirly pattern I think it looks better so uh, we're going to now add a mirror modifier so hit add modifier add a mirror modifier and you get some really cool things now but for this one I'm going to make it all completely symmetrical so on this mirror modifier I'm going to select every axis so you get this sort of pattern but I'm also going to bisect them all and what that does is it basically cuts off the object from where it mirrors so they don't intercept and I'm going to flip that as well on every axis and now you get this sort of pattern Cool. now we're going to start shading it so we're going to just quickly save great so once you've saved we're going to jump into render mode so hit Z and then 8 and you're not going to see much because we've deleted that light and we're actually going to be using emission shading to light up the scene um, it's going to look a lot cooler I think than using lighting though you can experiment with some lighting patterns if you want but for this we're going to use emission so um, first thing I'm going to do is go to my world settings and on the color, I'm going to drop that down to black. Back to my cube, I'm just going to turn my overlays on. I'm going to come down to my modifier section, come up here, add a modifier, and we're going to add a wireframe modifier now. You can see what that does, it essentially creates a wireframe around all the edges and kind of deletes the faces of the original object. Untick replace original so we can keep the faces. This way it just adds the wireframe on top of the mesh. We're going to assign two materials. You see, you see here it says material zero. Uh, that is the original material of this. So if you come to your material set section, this is the base material of the um, of the object. So we're going to leave that as it is, and we're going to create a second material. And this is going to be the emission that we're going to assign to the wireframe. Uh, so if you select new. And we've got two materials, material and material one. On your surface, we're going to change that to emission, and you're going to see nothing's happened yet. So if you come back to your modifier section, you see this material section, it's still it's still assigned to the original material. So just change that to one, just click on this arrow, and now you'll see a wireframe emitting light. You can have replace original checked. Um, it's just going to allow you to see through the object, which can look cool if you want that but in this tutorial we're going to uncheck it um, because I think it looks a little bit tidier in my opinion but you can experiment with that if you like uh, so yeah we've got our base material we're just going to leave as is and on this we're going to pump that up to 20 and now hit play cool we're going to pump up the wireframe maybe make it around that thick now just hit play and make sure there isn't any weird clipping issues with the wireframe because that can sometimes happen and just make sure it's not clipping out of the camera as well and you don't have to have the camera on top on the z-axis this is what I mean by saying that all you have to do is change a few uh, settings um, it's not just the modifier settings you can just change the angle of the uh, of the camera and you can still get some really different sort of sort of looks and styles of animation but yeah for the sake of the tutorial Again, I'm going to leave it as it is, but you guys play around with it because there's loads of different variations that you can find. So I'm just going to shade this a bit. I'm going to open up my shader editor. So if you see on the top right corner when your cursor comes like that, you can just drag it in. Change this thing to shader editor. Bring that in. 
and I'm gonna add a color ramp, so shift A, converter, color ramp. I'm gonna plug that in to the emission and I'm gonna use a noise texture, so shift A, add a texture, add a noise texture, plug the fac into the fac and we're gonna choose one color. You can choose whatever you want, but I'm gonna go for a nice light blue on one and on this, pump it up and it's gonna be a nice sort of yellowy orange. Just zoom in a bit so we can see what's going on. And I'm gonna bring this one in and I'm gonna bring that in as well. On the noise texture, just bring the scale down a bit, say about there. I'm gonna bring the detail down as well. Cool, we're gonna get rid of this thing now. So on the corner that you dragged out, just drag it back in the opposite direction and that gets rid of that. And I'm gonna pump up the wireframe a little bit more. Just don't pump your wireframe too thick. Now I'm gonna to come to my, um, my render properties. I'm just going to add a bit of bloom. I'm going to drop the intensity a bit because I find it a bit strong in Eevee. We use an Eevee by the way. Make sure you set to uh, Eevee on your render engine. We are going to make it very high contrast as well. Right, so that's pretty much done. So uh, all you've got to do now is render the animation. But before we do that, I mentioned earlier that you can adjust a few parameters and get completely different patterns. So I'm just going to show you some things that I would adjust if you want to make some patterns that are different to mine. One thing you can do is simply change the scale of the Bezier circle. Lots of different sort of looks. You can change the axis that you actually rotate on. You can go back to your modifier section on your cube. You can play around with the count of your arraignment, but just be wary that that's gonna up the verts as well, which your computer might start to struggle if you go a bit too crazy with that. Uh, you can obviously play around with the uh, relative offset. Uh, you can play around the screw and the angle of the screw and also the axis that you're actually screwing from. So you could do it from the X, now hit play, you get a completely different sort of look. Um, you can change the angle of the camera as well. So if you had your camera on the Y axis, you get a different sort of pattern as well. Obviously, you can play around with the mirror modifier settings as well. You don't even have to have the mirror modifier. Turn that off. Even that looks pretty cool. I like the symmetry though, but that I think that looks awesome as well. Really trippy. Just have a play around with it, man. Just have a play around, and I'm sure you'll find some really cool patterns that you like. Only thing left to do now is to render the animation. Uh, so if you just change this to wherever you want to save it, I wouldn't save it in a TMP folder because you shouldn't really be digging around in files there. Set container to MP4. Video codec, you want that H.264 and output quality, perceptually lossless. And then all you've got to do is come to render and render animation. Uh, there's some other cool things you can do with compositing as well if you want to bring it to life. But I'm going to show that in another tutorial which I will link later when I've actually done it. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Like I said, if you feel like you learned something new, please hit the like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And also, I'd love to see what you guys do with the tutorial as well. So feel free to tag me on Instagram in your renders. Uh, that's at Nebmotion. Um, I'll be leaving a link to the project file if you guys want to have a play around with that as well. You can find that on my website. That's nebmotion.co.uk.